How are you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and you are watching Nature Now. So I just uh, rolled over this log, and I found what's called a brownish gray fishing spider, uh, Dalamedes tenebrosus, and check it out. It's kind of a big one. Believe it or not, they get a little bit bigger than this. Of course, given their name, these spiders are often found near water, but it's also common to find them well away from water, deep in the forests and woodlands. Early in the season, you'll find a lot of younger fishing spiders, but later in the summer, they can get quite large. Now, a great characteristic I use for identifying these kind of spiders is I look at the back of the abdomen. You'll see two W's stacked on top of each other, or, as I like to see it, the waves in the water, appropriate for fishing spiders. Also notice how the legs are somewhat striped, another key identifying feature for brownish gray fishing spiders. So I had a brownish gray fishing spider as a pet and I had her for two years. She got pretty large and I used to feed her crickets and it was really crazy to watch her tackle a cricket because she'd feel on the other side of the tank and just dive for this thing. Sometimes she would actually somersault with the cricket wrapped up in her legs and she would deliver that fatal blow, you know, with her venomous bite. So brownish gray fishing spiders are one of the largest species of spider we have in Pennsylvania. But let me tell you, down south, Dalamedes scriptus, which is the same type of spider, almost, gets even bigger. It looks the same as this species, but a lot larger. There was one time I was swamping out in North Carolina looking to uh, photograph and film a juvenile five-line skink. So I'm out in a cedar swamp, and I'm rowing along, and finally at one point I heard a lizard run up a cypress tree. So I brought my canoe over to it, which was just uh, about four feet away, and I'm scanning the tree, and I couldn't find a lizard. And then my canoe bumps the tree, and I hear it go running again. Turns out it wasn't a lizard. It was a fishing spider, a big fishing spider. And it moved so fast into a nook. So I started to get some photographs of it, but, the, you know, the wind's blowing, the canoe's moving. I couldn't get any photographs that were actually in focus. The worst part was, is every time the wind blew, my canoe bounced against the tree, and the spider would kind of jump a little bit. I kept trying to get the shots, and finally my nerves got the best of me, and I was just like, that's it, I'm done. I'm, I'm moving along. I don't want that spider on me. It was too fast. Now, their prey include the obvious, you know, insects and other invertebrates, sometimes smaller spiders, and they're great hunters. They're really fast, and they'll chase them down. But sometimes you'll see them resting with their first two pairs of legs on the surface of the water. In fact, they can run across the water if they want to, but they'll wait there. The creepy thing is, is if they want to, they can catch a small tadpole or a small fish, and they'll be fine with that. Kind of disturbing to see a spider do that. But their main preference of food is insects and other invertebrates. These spiders don't actually make webs like many spiders do. They roam freely about the landscape in search of prey or places to find cover during the daytime. Like other types of fishing spider, these spiders are capable of diving underwater and actually staying submerged. I remember one night where I found one of these fishing spiders of considerable size, and it was on a cedar tree, so as I was trying to photograph it, I used my finger for scale and touched the bark right next to the spider. I wanted to do it lightly, not to scare the spider off, but I did it too lightly. The spider actually turned around, wrapped her front legs around my finger, delivered a bite, and when she realized I was not an insect, she let go, turned around, and went away several steps quicker than I could pull my hand away. That's how fast it was. It did not hurt at all, except for my heart. I had such an adrenaline after that. It just startled me so much. The thing is, is some people have been bitten by these spiders and they're like, it hurts. It's not comfortable at all. So, you know, the bite can vary. It's not gonna send you to the hospital unless you suffer anaphylaxis, which is, um, you know, an allergic reaction. But they're generally not that dangerous of a species of spider, maybe just a bit of a painful bite at worst, in most cases. These spiders are extremely fast, and as you can see, their camouflage is incredible. On some species of tree, you won't see the spider. Ugh. So as you see, these spiders are extremely fast, and I just tried to handle one, and she just moved too quickly for me. As soon as I touched her, she would dart across. I know it's a safe species of spider. It's not gonna send me to the hospital or anything, but when a spider moves that fast, I don't know what's wrong with me. It just really intimidates me, and I check it out pretty much every time, as you just saw. Wow. 
So anyways, you know, I just rolled a log, found the fishing spider, and I decided I'll make a short video on them since I've got, you know, various clips at home and stuff. It's not the most in-depth video, but I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. And maybe you can tell the difference now between wolf spiders and brownish gray fishing spiders. There are those several identifying characteristics on the fishing spider. <sighs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.